Right, so what I'm going to attempt to do now, hopefully, is uh, show you how I uh, set up my little sewer. And the first thing I do, I, I've cut the tapes already, and all I do is put a little needle through. and stick it under the piece of the wood so it doesn't move. Do the same with the second one. There we go. Then I've got my little H bits which are little brass tags which I um, I'm going to uh, fit onto the tapes if nobody's ever seen this before so I don't know if you can see that I'm going to turn it down and put it through from the underneath like so and then it'll tighten up on its own and what I do I just pass it through the hole push it pull it gently over to myself and then turn it around underneath there are other methods of doing this but this is my little silly method and uh, I haven't I've never seen anybody doing this before so I'm assuming this is what they do and if nobody's ever seen it before, it's better than nothing, I suppose. And you must ensure that when you do do it, that the, the tape is on this side of the H. If it's not, it, you need the tape to be up flush with the hole in the bottom of the, in the, the platen. Otherwise, you put a little board on which holds everything together and it makes it easier to sew with and this should fit over the hole and it should abut up like so. So I'll do the next one, over the top, through the hole and then just turn it around a couple of times. I don't, am I out of sight there? I must I'm probably out of sight there. This is this is why I like to be in control of the thing myself. Push it through the hole, ensuring that the tape is facing forwards, and there we have it. So it's as easy as that. Now the next thing I've got to ensure is is Up here I've got me my little box. I'll just move that around. And I always lay the box in the same position. So I lay them down um, with the headers facing away from me. First page. And then when I pick them up, I turn them over so that I know that the next page coming down is going to be the one I need to go on top. So if that's number 16, I know that that next page is number 17 if I lay it along the same way. Now what I've got to do now is ensure that the tapes fit within within the tape where the tapes actually fit so you've got to put one over and one you can push them along because you haven't tightened up yet so you sh it should be over the tape where the tapes actually fit so that's that's good enough 
and um, I'll see if I can go down a little bit so there we are now what I can do is tighten up the little tighten them up until they go and I try and ensure that the needles are sticking up under the wood so that they're out of the way because you can I haven't found anything better than a needle yet to do this so you need to be relatively tight these they don't need to be over tight but they need to be fairly tight and it, they're pretty solid now so then I get my string or my cotton and I have a piece of wax beeswax uh, this is just raw cotton about just over a metre long which is about comfortable for me and then I've done this before but uh, do it two or three times to get a good residual of beeswax on and then just pull it through your cable through your beeswax pull your string through your through your beeswax I'm probably going out of shot there I'm trying to watch what I'm doing and do this as well so I'll do this a few times what this does is um, it stops the string curling when you start stitching and you get yourself into waffle knots without this and if you if it tends to dry out or go a little bit soft you'll find it's, it, it goes into um, knots, starts going into knots even though you put this on just put a little bit more on while you, while you in, in between your stitching so you can, add, you can add to it there we go, so I'll put that to one side and uh, <laughs> what I'll do is now I'll I use an embroidery needle. My, I like I like these embroidery needles because they're short and they've got a large eye at the end and they're as blunt as your granny's old teeth. Um, you can't stab yourself or anything. Those other needles that I'm using to hold the tapes up in my printing frame, they're actually classed as um, sewing needles, professional sewing needles, and I hate the things. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting a thread on. There's several ways of doing this, putting a thread on, but this is the way that I do it. And I just pull it down and then, and that, that not just won't come off now. It will not come off. So there we are. Then what I can do is, go and get the center of the page I've squeezed these pages up I, I always squeeze mine up well but even so it's it's quite hard to find the middle of these things if you look there is a little gap and if you put the needle in where the gap is nine times out of ten you're on the right place and you'll see that my little saw cuts are on there and uh, they're, they're quite um, they're quite sizable I like big holes in uh, when I'm uh, doing this sewing up and then what you do then is you push the needle through the first hole and just stitch along and leave a little bit at the end of a couple of inches so as you can tie on you can be a little bit generous with that. 
pass it over. Don't stitch into the into the, the webbing that you put on. Try not to stitch into the webbing. And try and stitch, try and sew up. I, I know I'm not at the moment because uh, I'm an old fart. But you should you should try and keep the thing horizontal. The, the, the sti you're stitching horizontal so as you don't pull the paper into holes. And there we go. The first two that you do are, are, are the most difficult because they're, they're loose. But once you've got the first the first two joined together, you'll find that the rest go on because it's attached to the, the tapes then. The thing is actually attached to the tapes and uh, it's quite solid. That's why you have the tapes quite, quite stiff to start with. You can, you can do this without a frame, I mean you, you don't actually need a frame to do this. But by heck, it makes it easy. And the other thing you can do, of course, is you can do eight and nine booklets, one after another, on the frame. There you are. I go through the last hole, and this is what I was saying before in one of my other videos. You must have even holes. Otherwise, the last hole that I'm coming out of now, you won't be able to come out of because if it's an odd hole you'll be going in and you'll never get out again. <laughs> it... There we are. So that's that's the arrangement you've got there. There's no point in trying to pull it tight yet because just take up the slack that's all, find out where the slack is, that's it. And then go for your next page which I, I showed you before which is there and I've got them in such a way that all I've got to do is pick them up and actually turn it over. Once I've turned it over, I've got to keep moving this camera back again. And then do the same thing. Find the hole. Nine times out of ten you'll find the centre. And there we are again. Normally when you're trying to show somebody it's sod's low and it won't work, but it's behaving itself today. So what I do then, I go straight in at the end and start sewing where I left off into the new, the new signature. And I carry on sewing along, making sure that I don't put my needle through those tapes. You must leave those tapes free. You sew over the tapes, but not into them. And then you go through. There's no need to keep looking to see if the thing's tight or anything like that. It's pointless just yet until you actually get to the end. And then you try and do your best. The first two on and the last two on are, are the worst ones. So that's why inside a book, normally, they're, they're the ones that's the, that are the loosest. So try saying that without teeth. And... Um, the most loose, I should have said. And you carry on. Go through. And there we are. Ensure that you pull horizontal. Never pull sort of vertical to the... Perpendicular to the... To the paper. Otherwise you'll, you'll, you'll pull the paper through cut it, it'll be like a knife for string. So what you do then is, I tend to hold the end with my finger, I don't know if you can see that, I've got my finger on there, I know I'm a long way off but I can't keep changing the things, and you pull them both, and I usually give them a, a little flick just to take the looseness out of it, and then I put my finger on, hold on to one of them, and make a little loop, and tie a little knot. My fingers are like uh, planks of wood at the moment. I don't have any particular skill doing this. It sods low when it goes in. There we go. And you pull it tight. And then you do another one, a double, a double knot. 
and you'll find the two are now joined together. So there you go. Now what you do is you can start doing your kettle stitches. Now I start again, take the next one, lift it up as I normally do, and then pass it over, take my needle, open up the centre, 32, 33, that's right, and then I just carry on sewing through the holes. Now when you get to the third signature you've got to do something different, which um, is called a kettle stitch. And I'll just go along to this end. a good idea dude. I'll just bang the machine there. Okay, so we go along to the end. And when we come out of the last hole, what I'll do now, I'll try and zoom in onto this for you. Right, now I've reached the end, I'm trying to get into focus for you. Um, I hold my finger on and pull the... pull the string horizontally and then just pull the... cotton until it takes all the slackness out of it and then put on my finger and then what you do then is I've got the wrong end here well this will be a mess what you do then is <coughs> you go and pick up the second one from where you've come out of, the second signature down. So there's a second signature and you go behind the string and you pass the needle through and the needle will pop out the side, you can see the needle popping out the side there and then you pull it through gently and when you pull it through you'll find out there is a little loop that pops up and this happens every time and then I would ought to, or I would be holding this by right so I'd have my finger on but if I put my finger on it means you can't see it so what you do then you pass the needle under the hole and pull it gently And that's what they call a kettle stitch. And you've done your first, well that's your third signature. And there you are. And you carry on and do that until you're finished.